Hi everybody, we are going to talk about the shape of organic molecules. Now, if you want a comprehensive review of Vesper, go to the playlist that says bonding and watch Vesper. I'm giving you the uh, shapes that you see most often in organic molecules, okay? Just so that we can focus on organic chemistry. Uh, first thing that we need to do is review quickly our table for valence shell electron pair repulsion. It's the principle that electron domains, areas where electrons exist, will always repel one another a maximum distance. Max, maximum distance. So you begin with the electron domains. Again, areas where electrons exist, you count those. If you've got two electron domains, there's two bonds, zero lone pairs, that's called linear. I want to show you that. Here would be an example, acetylene. Now remember, multiple bonds count as one electron domain. It's just an area where electrons exist. Uh, lone pairs also count as one electron domain. So if I'm looking at this carbon right here, it has two electron domains. There's one area where electrons exist in that single bond between the carbon and the hydrogen, and then there's one area where the electrons exist in between the two carbons. Now I understand that there's six electrons there, but they're still consolidated in one area. So this is considered two total electron domains. Well, if we've got two electron domains, that angle, they're going to repel each other a maximum distance. That angle from here to here is going to be 180 degrees. 180 degrees, if we were to look through like a scanning electron microscope, it looks linear. It looks straight. That 180 degrees, the molecule is going to look straight, so we call that linear. We call that linear. Um, notice it would be the same thing for this carbon. If I were to look at this carbon, it has one, two electron domains, so its angle will be 180 degrees and its shape will be linear. Let's do another one. So we have three electron domains. Let's say that they're all bonded, zero lone pairs, that's called trigonal planar, is because it looks like a triangle, it's all on one plane. Uh, the angle on that, 120 degrees. So let's check out this first carbon. I'll call this carbon one, and we'll call this one carbon two. So if I'm looking at carbon one, let's count the electron domains around that. It has one, two, three. Again, there's a double bond. I understand that there's four electrons that are shared, but they're still in one area, one domain. So one, two, three. Again, single, double, triple, those all count as one electron domain. Uh, so if I have three electron domains, the maximum distance, those three domains are going to repel uh, like a triangle. So you have one, two, three. They repel a maximum distance of 100. If I did this right here, that would be 120 degrees. There's 120 degrees. There's 120 degrees. Um, and the name for this, trigonal planar. You'll want to memorize this table. You'll want to have this table memorized. If I look at carbon two, it's going to be identical because it has three electron domains. One, two, three, they're all bonded, no lone pairs. So the angle is going to be 120 degrees and it's trigonal planar. Here's the cool thing. When you look at an atom and you count the electron domains around it, number of bonds, number of lone pairs, wherever it fits on this table, that's going to be its angle and its name. Okay, they, those won't change. You just count electron domains, look at number of bonds and lone pairs, and then see where it fits on this table. Then you have the angle and the name. Let's go to four. Um, so four electron domains. We're going to have four bonds, zero lone pairs, now notice, electron geometry here, if I'm looking at my four, this always stays the same. The electron geometry is based on the total number of electron domains. So if you have four electron domains, the electron geometry is always tetrahedral. Now, if you change the number of bonds and lone pairs, that's what changes the molecular geometry. And on tests, that's usually what professors want. They want to know what you see. The molecular geometry is uh, what could be seen or detected. Uh, through experimentation, and the electrons, they will force lone pairs, they'll force the shape, the tetrahedral shape, but in essence, they're not detectable, they're not visible. And so um, the molecular geometry, I tell students, is as if we could see molecules, what they look like. Um, so it's what you would see, and I'll put that in air quotes. Okay, so if we've got four bonds, 
Um, you'll notice that the electron geometry and molecular geometry are the same because we could see, see all four bonds. Um, the angle on this, kind of interesting, is 109.5. Now we draw it, it looks like a 98 degree angle, but that's not really what it is. This is going to be 109.5, and I'll show you why in just a little bit. Uh, so let's count our electron domains for carbon one and carbon two. Carbon one has one, two, three, four electron domains. They're all bonds, there's no lone pair, so automatically I know it's going to be called tetrahedral, tetrahedral, and the angle between those hydrogens, the maximum distance it repels is 109.5 degrees. It's because it goes three-dimensional. Uh, let's look at carbon two. I've got one, two, three, four electron domains. Great, all bonds, no lone pairs. Guess what? Tetrahedral, its angle is 109.5 degrees. I could go right there, 109.5 degrees, and it's going to be tetrahedral. Now, I still have my four electron domains, but let's change it up. We're going to have three bonds and one lone pair. So again, the electron geometry, four electron domains total, it's going to be tetrahedral, but I can't see one domain. I can't see that lone pair. So it's now called what we see, again, it's just what we could, what we could detect from instrumentation, is called trigonal pyramidal. It looks like, I tell my students, imagine a tripod, one, two, three legs. Here is the top stand for the camera. You can't see this top part. That's where the lone pair is. You only see the bottom three legs, so it looks like a pyramid. Um, so trigonal pyramidal. The angle is actually less than 109.5, and it just depends on your professor. Some professors just want you to know that it's less than 109.5, and some want you to know specifically that it's 107 degrees. Um, that lone pair that sits on top, like on a tripod where the camera would be, it is really close to the atom. It sits close to the atom, so it has a great ability to torque and repel the other three legs, so they come a little bit closer to 107. So just see what your professor wants you to put on homework and a test. Okay, so we're going to count, I'm going to call this carbon one, let's call that, <coughs> excuse me, nitrogen one. Let's count electron domains. So carbon has one, two, three, four, four electron domains, they're all bonded, four electron domains, all bonded, that actually would be called tetrahedral. And that would be the 109.5 degrees. Okay, it falls here, four, falls right there, four bonds, zero lone pairs. Now let's count nitrogen. Nitrogen has one, two, three, four electron domains. So it's electron geometry, a tetrahedral. Oh, but look, it's got three bonds and one lone pair. One, two, three bonds, one lone pair. This nitrogen is going to be your trigonal pyramidal, pyramidal. And the angle between these is going to be the 107 degrees. Wow, 107 degrees. And it's because of that lone pair. So this has a different name and a different angle. Different name and different angle because three bonds, one lone pair. The one lone pair is what changes it. Um, and then the last one that you're going to need for the vast majority of all of our organic molecules. We've got our four electron domains, two bonds, two lone pairs this time. Again, four electron domains, the electron geometry is tetrahedral, that dictates the shape of the molecule. Um, what we see though, what we could detect from instrumentation, we can't detect those lone pairs, so what it looks like is bent, as we call it bent. Um, kind of a simple name, it's called bent. So let's look at our carbon, I'm gonna call that carbon one, let's call that oxygen one. Count electron domains. So the carbon has one, two, three, four electron domains, all bonds, no lone pairs. That's going to be tetrahedral molecular geometry 109.5. So let's write that down. This will be our 109.5 degrees and it's tetrahedral. Now the oxygen, let's count electron domains. We've got one bond, one lone pair, another bond, another lone pair. One, two, three, four electron domains. Two of those are bonds two are lone pairs. So this is going to be called bent. Those two lone pairs, we won't be able to see, detect from instrumentation. So this is called bent. And the angle, let's talk about the angle. Again, this is less than 109.5. We now have two lone pairs sitting really close to that oxygen. So even greater ability to repel and torque and push 
uh, the two arms right here is actually 104.5 degrees. Just depends again what your professor wants you to put down. So this angle you may write is 104.5. So even less than the 109 because of the two lone pairs repelling um, on top of that central atom. Now a couple of takeaways for you. So I modeled how to do this. I just made a recipe list for you. Uh, first, identify the atom in question. And you will see in problems that they will label just like I did, they might label carbon one, carbon two, they might bold the carbon or highlight the carbon. And it's that atom that next you count the electron domains, okay? And again, multiple bonds all equiv um, are equivalent to one electron domain, lone pairs are one electron domain. So count the electron domains. After you do that, you simply plug it into the table. However many bonds and lone pairs it has, you'll write down the molecular geometry and the angle. Okay, so you have to have this table memorized. Uh, now, I wanted to visit with you about our tetrahedral, what that looks like and how we draw it. This is our tetrahedral right there. Let me show you. So I have carbon with one, two, three, four hydrogens. And you can see this is not a 90 degree angle. From here to here, there's your 109.5. There's the 109.5. Um, it's definitely, th definitely three-dimensional. So how we draw it is we do a wedge to show what's sticking out of the plane, a dashed line, what's behind the plane, and then solid lines for it's on the same plane. So I want to show you this right here is that. So notice if I'm looking, my plane is right here. These are on the same plane right there. This little hydrogen is sticking out of the plane and the hydrogen here is sticking behind the plane. So if I bring that here, we have got my hydrogen and hydrogen on the plane. And then you've got your dashed line for the hydrogen behind and a wedge for the hydrogen in front. That's how we'll draw tetrahedral if we have to do a three dimensional and you will see that on in textbooks. Another one, let's put uh, this is ethane, so I've got my two carbons together. Uh, and you can see where the hydrogens are. This is going to be on this plane right here, and then down here, that one's on the same plane. But then I have um, hydrogens that are sticking in front of the plane and then behind the plane. Um, so let's look at this right here. That would be, this is what this one looks like and how I draw it. So hydrogen, hydrogen, those are on the same plane, so they're solid lines. And then I have a hydrogen sticking in front, hydrogen sticking in front, there's your two wedges. And then I have a hydrogen in the back, a hydrogen in the back. And so those are your two dashed lines. Real quick, I'm going to change this for you and we're going to add um, an oxygen to it. And we're going to two together, figure out what are the electron geometries. So this is this molecule right here. We just put an oxygen on it, just put an oxygen on it. Um, and that's what that, really cool, there's so much fun, organic chemistry is awesome. That's what the organic molecule looks like. So let's figure out our molecular geometries, our angles. Uh, I'm going to call this carbon one, let's call this oxygen two and carbon three. And I'm going to use a different color for this. So if I look at this carbon one right there, we've got one, two, three, four electron domains, they're all single bonds, so that is going to be the tetrahedral, and it's 109.5. How did I know that? It's right here. Four electron domains, zero bonds, molecular geometry is called tetrahedral. It's 109.5 degrees. Um, and here it is. That's it. There's the tetrahedral. One, two, three, four electron domains. Tetrahedral, the shape is 109, or the angle is 109.5. Now let's look at this oxygen. So looking at the oxygen, count the electron domains touching that oxygen. We've got one, two, three, four electron domains, two are bonds, two are lone pairs. So you look at the table, that is going to be two bonds, two lone pairs, bent, it's bent. So this, I'll write it up here, is bent, and that is 104.5 degrees. Um, so notice on this, there are the two bonds and then up here would be the two, it'd actually be this way, an electron pair, an electron pair, but the, a machine wouldn't be able to detect those. 
So it looks, molecular geometry looks like this. Um, if we could see it, we'd have a lone pair here and a lone pair right there. Uh, and then let's do carbon three. So carbon three, I'm going to count this one now. We've got one, two, three, four electron domains, all our bonds. So what's the shape? The molecular geometry is tetrahedral and the angle is the 109.5. So I'll write that down here. We've got the tetrahedral and it's the 109.5 degrees. And that's how you'll do your work. That's how you'll do your work, whether it's an assignment, you're working on a lab, um, a test. Identify the atom, count electron domains, and then you're going to have this memorized so you can write down the molecular geometry and the angle. Okay, nice, good work. Have a great day. Thanks.